Hi everyone, this is Keone from Haunting You. We have been working really hard on getting Sanguine Creek Estates ready for the 2021 haunt season, and we put out a, a diagram, a 3D model of the haunt that we're planning to build, and people loved it. We got lots of questions about what, how we made it and uh, the software that we used to do so, so I wanted to do a quick tutorial of that software to show how we did it. The software you're, we're using today is called Dream Plan Plus by NCH Software. You can download it as a trial and it was so easy to use, I did everything within the trial. But I also used this so much that I went ahead and just bought it. And it was it's not terribly expensive. We're talking like $20. Like it, it is extremely affordable. And in my mind, it's worth every penny. But if you don't want to pay for it, you can do everything within the trial for the most part. It gives you all the features that you'll need. And that trial is good for like seven days and finish with, finish it and then just get a new trial next year. It, it's an idea. Anyway, so we're going to jump right in. So this is the screen that will pop up when you open it. And what we're going to do is just start a blank project because we're starting from scratch here. And it brings you to this screen. To zoom, I am uh, just uh, using the scroll bar on my mouse, and that lets you control what you're looking at. Down here in the bottom left, this is your control bar. Uh, and you can use the controls here to move yourself back and forth and pivot and go, yeah. So you, you can see what all the controls. This is the best way in my mind to view. You can also uh, use the select tool, click and grab and move around that way. Uh, as we get into it, you'll see I have trouble with that, but it may work for you. I always start by uh, measuring out the area that I have to work with and then making a scale drawing. So this is my scale drawing. Uh, I make it on a couple pieces of graph paper and I try to make it easy for myself. I use the grid on the graph paper so that each square is one foot square. And that makes it very easy to translate my measurements onto the graph paper. I'm just counting squares to, to get the measurements. The really dark lines are fixed structures in my design. So like up here, this is a deck. Here's the garage walls right here. And then over here, I have the edge of the driveway. These are all fixed points that I cannot change. And so after I've sketched them in with pencil, I go over it again with pen. Uh, that way, as I'm making my movable walls in pencil, I can move things around without uh, erase accidentally erasing my constraints. Once I have my design beautifully drawn out in a scale drawing, it's time to put that into the computer. And that's a feature of Dream Plan that I only just discovered this year. I don't know if it's always been there, if it's new uh, in the latest version of the software, but it has a really cool tool where I can import that picture into the software and then just trace all of the lines where my walls are to build the model. And by doing that, I built my model in like 10 minutes. It was amazing. So we're gonna go over that right now, how to use that tool. Guess where you find it? It's in Tools. And it's this one right here called the Trace Wizard. So by clicking on Start Trace Wizard, first thing you have to do is choose what level you are tracing. So because this software is good for building your dream house, and I have built multi-story houses, house models with it, you have to choose what level. In this case, everything's going to be on the ground level, so we're just going to do, so we want to focus on the ground level. Hit Next. And then you choose your file. So I had to find some way to scan my drawing into the computer. I did that by laying it down on a piece of, or on the table and taking a picture of it with my phone. High tech scanning, let me tell you. So that is this picture right here. And there it is, beautifully imported, right? Now we're gonna do next. And then we need to calibrate it. So calibrating it is, um, is translating the scale of your drawing into the computer. So we're gonna hit by start calibration, and then it says click on the trace image at the beginning of the feature you are using for calibration. So we're gonna zoom in here real quick. And what we want to do is pick one of our squares, right? So these hash marks, ignore the hash marks. Those are what I use when I'm counting to figure out how many wall panels I will need. But we want just a nice, we want a good one that we can, a good measurement we can work with. Trying to find one. There we go. So we're just going to drag that. Is 
That is one foot. Okay, so now that it knows that it's one foot, it has properly calibrated the drawing to so that um, the drawing is in uh, it matches the feet that it actually is. So now is the fun part. We're going to come over here to building, and now we have all of the features of our building that we may want to incorporate into our haunt. And we want to start with walls. So the wall tool is super easy. You just you click on choose wall tool, and then you come over to where you want your wall. Click once, drag to where you want the wall to end. One, two. Now to, so it will automatically let you do right turns off of any point where you end the wall because the, as long as the walls are all connected, it makes it very, very easy to do so. Yeah, so we're just gonna keep going with that for a little bit. Bump, 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 bump. Sorry, right, not that one, this one. That's a bed right there. Okay. So now we've reached the end of a wall, so we just hit escape, and it will let us start a new wall in another location. So let's come back over here and we'll do this other. Uh, that Where that T points up, that's allowing you to connect it to an existing joint. So that's exactly what we wanna do. We wanna to connect to an existing joint. And I want to do this awkwardly shaped, or this awkward angled wall right here that accounts for an awkwardly angled area of my driveway. And to do that, you just have to hit shift, and hold down the shift key as you are dragging and that will allow you to match any strange angles. Same thing, we got a couple strange angles here. I'm gonna go straight through the door, you'll see why in a little bit. And then we can pick back up on proper right angles. Same thing, going through doors here because we are going to actually build doors later. Yeah, keep going there. The dotted lines that you see there. And then here's another spot where I've just a slightly strange. Okay, and I'm so now I'm just gonna go through the model and finish uh, drawing in all of my walls. Okay, and with that, all of our walls are now uh, in position. You notice I left a few spots, uh, a few lines not drawn over, and that's because something else is going to go there. So right here, I have what's going to be a cage, and it's going to use chain link fence. So I'm going to use chain link fence here to make cage. Same thing over here, there'll be chain link fence along all of this. And I want to mark that as such. So I'm going to come over here to exterior landscaping items and click on fencing. Now what kind of fencing do we want here? Well, we want wire. Now I need to describe the, the type of fence that I'm going to have here. So it's going to be uh, eight feet tall, so that's railing height eight feet. What kind of posts are you using? Well, in our case, we're not really using posts. We'll just say we're using two by two. Spacing, how far apart? Well, one, two, three, we'll put a post here. So really every four feet we want a post. Post style, uh, and this is going to be, well, I mean, it's gonna be metal. So we'll just say it's painted gray. Color. I want it to be in the gray range. Rail style, same thing, stick with painted. Rail color, guess what? It's gonna be gray. But you can see how this would give you all kind. yeah, we're gonna do a mesh. But you can see how this would give you all kinds of different features that you could put into your haunt and you can like put into here. So spacing, Okay, so now that we have all of that, we can now draw in where that will be. Doot, 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 doot. And that will be all of this. Okay, and then I got one more over here where our lobotomy patient's going to be. I'm gonna put it here as well. Doot. 
Shoot. Beautiful. So with that, we have all of our uh, our pieces in. And because we have all of our pieces in, we can now turn off the tracer. So now that we have everything all drawn out, we can uh, start playing with it a little bit more. So I want to come over here to our menu bar and uh, click on this button. So this is what allows us to toggle between 2D, 3D uh, models. So we're just going to click on it and we want to see the 3D view. Ta-da! I'll take a look. You can see all of the walls that we built, and because it is fully enclosed, there uh, it adds floor automatically. If you do not fully enclose it, like leave space for doors or whatever, uh, then it will it, uh, it will not do that. Take a look at our uh, our cages. Beautiful cage, automatically rendered. Same over here. Beautiful cage, automatically rendered, and it just made it so easy, right? Okay, so now we can start adding in other details uh, of what we're going to have. So like our entrance door is right here, so I need a door. Does it matter what kind of door? No, not particularly, but look at all of the different doors that you could potentially do. They even have garage doors. It's just absolutely crazy. I do want a door on this one, so we're going to just say exterior door for lack of a better. We have an exterior door here. That, that is our entrance. And then over here, we're gonna we need a door frame. Because there's a door frame right here. Very similarly, there's a door frame right here. This is an awkward laundry room that people are just going to walk through because it gets them out. So in and out. And I'm missing a wall right here. So we're going to draw a wall again. Bloop. I'll connect those. Just like that. Okay, push escape to get out of that tool. Back to doors. We need another door frame here at the end of this hall. Uh-oh, this hall's not big enough. So we might have to make an adjustment here. And that's okay. So we can grab our select tool. Just grab this wall and we're gonna scoot it out a little bit. Because this is outside and it doesn't really matter to me anyway. I've got a shed right here that I'm just putting walls in front of and we can we can make things adjust. That's okay. So back to door frame. Now it fits. Beautiful. Okay. What else do we have here? So this one right here. This is going to be my morgue, right? And inside my morgue, we're going to need some uh, the slabs where the bodies are going to be laid out. So we if we go to interior, we can see all kinds of different things that we can add to the inside. So we want furniture. We're going to want a bed, or actually, you know what, let's not use a bed. Let's use a table. That probably makes more sense, right? That will do. Perfect. Okay, so we can adjust the size of our table, 5 feet and whatever, and then we can rotate it as well. Let's try 90. There we go. So we're going to put one table right here. That's going to make it hard for people to walk through. And then we're going to put one more table right here. To make it hard for people to walk through. There we go. So we got a couple of tables now uh, to block the way. Okay, so what else do we need in here? Well, we since we're in this area, let me zoom down a little bit, we have a drop panel right here. That's what this little room is. That's, that's going to be a drop panel. And so we need a picture. We'll go under miscellaneous. Ooh, they have cakes. That's not what we want, though. We want a picture, picture, picture frames. Perfect. Look at that beautiful picture frame. This one has got to be pretty big, though. We need it to be like 24 inches by, yeah, 24 by 18. Sure, that'll do. So we've got that right there. You could also do that as a window if you prefer uh, dealer's choice here. And then since we're in pictures, uh, this hallway right here is going to be our picture gallery where we're going to have all the previous owners of Sanguine Creek Estates displays. We're going to put a whole bunch of pictures in here. And this is where, as the lightning flashes, Wendigo horns are going to appear on the heads of each of these 
pictures layering our monster throughout the haunt. There we go. Beautiful. Okay, what else do we have? Well, over here, this is our electroshock therapy room right here. And inside our electroshock electro shock therapy room, what do we need? Well, we need a chair. That will represent our electric chairs. Let's see, what do we have for chairs? We will just make a fat basic chair. There we go, beautiful. I wanna rotate that real quick. There we go, so that he's facing them as they come in. There's our electric chair. Okay, what else we got? Where else? Okay, so over here, we need a window. This is where we're gonna do our Pepper's Ghost illusion. Yeah, something like that will be fine. Window with a ghost inside. And then here we have the porcelain dolls room. And inside the porcelain dolls room, we need a bed. So we're gonna go back to furniture on the interior. Yep, single bed with headboard, perfect. We just need to rotate it. Let's go 90 degrees again. So I'm gonna make that a little bit smaller. Let's say like 60 inches. Yeah, there we go. Porcelain dolls bed. Okay. So that gives you just a pretty good idea of like um, the kind of features that you have. Oh, 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 one, la one last big one that I wanted to point out. We're gonna jump over here to people. And look, you can actually insert people. And I do this to help me keep track of where my actors are going to be. So I'm gonna have an actor there in the, lob that's my lobotomy patient. I'm going to have an actor here. There's our porcelain doll. We need an actor outside controlling the flow, not letting people in too fast. We need an actor in our electroshock therapy room, throw in the switch. We have an actor over here. That is our Wendigo. So it's just representations. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't have to be precise. It's just representations. But it gives us a pretty good idea of what the haunt is going to look like. It gives you a visualization that you can use when you are coaching your actors, when you're trying to explain what is going to happen, where they're going to be working, what they have to work with. And it gives you a really good visual aid when you're telling your story, when you're working your pitch to get people on board. So Dream Plan Plus Software by NCH. It is an absolutely fantastic, really easy to use tool that I adore or if you found this useful, go download it, try it out for yourself uh, and see what it can do for you. If you have any questions, definitely drop them in the comments and I'm more than happy to uh, do my best to answer them. And of course, make sure you subscribe to our videos, uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel so you can be notified when we put out more tutorials. Uh, we're doing, I'm working on a tutorial right now on, on triggers for animatronics and uh, building more animatronics and every build that we do is going up on there. So definitely go subscribe so you can keep up with what we are up to. Of course, check out the podcast. If, if you found this really cool and you want to see what else we're doing, go check out the Haunting You po podcast at www.hauntingyou, just the letter U, dot com. And you can find all of our episodes there talking about how we build Sanguine Creek Estates, as well as lots of really cool guests talking about what they do in the haunted attraction industry. So go check out the podcast, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and go get building because we are running out of time. Happy hunting, everyone. We will see you next time.